Hi, and welcome to the second part of the ITPLD resources program. So today I'm gonna to show you how to get to our resources again. So you're gonna to go to our website, indiantrailslibrary.org, then choose resources and by category. Today, we're gonna to be going over journals, languages, news, and reference. So first we're gonna be going over journals. And here's gonna be all of our journal resources. So here's first APS journals. These are all physical reviews. So when you click inside of here, it's gonna bring you to another Indian Trails webpage. And these are all physical reviews of mostly hard sciences. So here are brief important papers, all topics in physics. And then there's stats, there is applied physics, uh, there's even more. There's physical review, special topics. And so you can go ahead and click into any of these and they all look fairly the same. And then here's where they have editor suggestion, more collections, authors you can look through. If you go back, you can go ahead and choose a second one. And then it's gonna look fairly similar where you can go through collections and authors. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, so a lot of really great information if you are trying to find research in the hard sciences. Then next is going to be the Class A Periodica. And so these are going to be articles, essays, book reviews in Spanish and from Latin American journals. So you can go ahead and click in here. And so we're going to be in our OCLC first search database. And so you'll see that the rest of the journals have a database that look just like this. And it's going to be searching the databases that are particular to these subjects. So these are everything that it's going to be searching are from Latin American journals. So here you can go ahead and put in any kind of search. So I'll go ahead, choose psychology. And then this is where you can choose the year if you would like it to be within the last 10 years. So you can choose 2012 to 2022. Um, if you want it to be a full text, you can do that. Um, and then you can go ahead and press search. So that was a little bit too, that can't happen if your searches are too narrow, then you may not actually find something. So sometimes you have to make it a little bit more broad. I'm going to go ahead and do psychology and search. And so then here are going to be all of the articles that come up that have psychology in the title or somewhere within the article itself. Next, we're going to be going over ECHO. And ECHO is Electronic Collections Online. And so you'll go ahead and see that it has a very similar interface. And so here's where you can search um, a whole bunch of stuff. And so this is just going to be an OCLC collection of scholarly journals. So I'll go ahead and search iPhones. And maybe I'll go ahead and I'm going to try again doing the year and see what comes up. So it looks like one article came up and it came out in 2012 and it's the mobile networks and applications. So I can go ahead and go back and maybe I'll go ahead and take away the year and press search. Here it's going to be a little bit more broad again, where it's going to probably mention anything with the phone, with technology. So um, these are a whole bunch of ones that you can choose from. Next is going to be Eric. And so Eric is the Educational Resource Information Center. So this is for your teachers, um, your teaching students. So this is where they're gonna go for a lot of their scholarly articles. So we can go ahead and look up lesson plans. And then here they have some more options here. If you want a language phrase, a document type, if you wanna have it peer reviewed, go ahead, press search. And then anything regarding lesson plans will come up here and you'd be able to click on whichever one that you'd like. 
and you know be able to read the article or if we don't have it or there's not a full text you'd be able to get it from another library next is going to be medline so this is also going to have the oclc interface and this is going to be for your med students um, for your medical professionals and then here is where you'd be able to search anything medical wise so we can go ahead and search maybe there's something about COVID-19. So then there's a whole bunch of things that came up. So here is where you'd be able to click on any of these options here about COVID-19. For the next part, we'll be going over. And for the next part, we'll be going over the languages section. Uh, so if we scroll down here, click on languages, uh, you'll see our two available options are Duolingo and Mango languages. Um, we can start with Duolingo first. So this is not the first page you'll see once you click on this. Um, the first time you do, the page will be blue and then it'll ask you what language you want to learn. Um, there's at least about 20 different options that you can pick from. Uh, I picked Italian just because. Um, you can always add other ones too at any point. It doesn't matter. So let's say, for instance, you want to learn Italian and uh, Portuguese, then you can. But you can also pick from any of these options that are here. As I said, there's a lot of different ones, um, and a few of them are marked as beta, which probably just means that they may still be in process of making sure everything is correct and specific and grammatically right. Um, <clears throat> so you may go back here. So the first thing I want to say is that unless you already have an account this is probably what you'll see this is just a blank account right now all right right here it says create a profile and save your progress and so you can either create it or you can sign in the thing with this is that it may keep track of your progress right now but at some point if you end up turning your computer off or when you uh, close out of the window or whatever when you come back, it may not have saved your progress. So it's a good idea to create a profile. Um, it only takes name, age, email, and password, or you can actually just link it to your Google or Facebook account. From that point, you'll be able, you'll probably see your profile here, and then you can make changes from that point. One of the things that I really like about Duolingo is the lessons are not only short, um, but they're very easy to handle. They never give you more than a couple of questions. Um, and upon completing it, you, in such a short period of time, you feel pretty good about it because it's only about five to 10 minutes that it will take up. And just practicing that much every day little by little will slowly help build up your skills. I also really enjoy the daily goal. Um, by doing one of the lessons, it gets marked as a goal. Uh, and just doing this has a sense of accomplishment because you're, you visually see something, so it feels more tangible that way than just being like, okay, well, I don't know a language now, and then I'm going to know it by the end. It's just something that helps encourage people to keep coming back every day. The last thing I want to show you is this discussion area right here. Um, when you click on it, you'll see other people who have posted something. Essentially, this is just where people have shared their stories about um, their time here and what they have done and how much they have 
progressed from the point when they initially started. Um, and I think it's a great place because it really reminds people that we're all beginning from possibly the very beginning of knowing nothing at all to hopefully comprehending an entirely different language. For our last part of languages, we'll be going to Mango Languages. And if we click on here. Uh, so this is the page you'll see the first time you go on or the second or third. Um, this is always what everybody sees. So it will tell you the library that you belong in. Obviously, I'm from Indian Trails. Um, but then if you already have an account, you can just log in this way. Uh, if you forgot your password as well, you can also sign up here too if you've never created an account. However, just for argument's sakes, we'll just say I want to use Mango as a guest. Skip signing anything. All right. And so from this point, it's asking us to pick a language. Um, I picked Italian last time. So how about I do Japanese? All right. So once you pick your language, you'll see this, um, depending on what language it is. Like I said, I picked Japanese. Um, but if you look down here, you'll see how many different units are in the section. And so we have introductions, connections, community, lifestyle, and ambitions. So that's pretty much the different sections that are that each of the ones are broken up into. And then from there, if we look to the right, we can see how each of the units is broken up it, more specifically. So uh, it says that there's four chapters and 41 lessons. So once you click on the first chapter in the introduction section, um, we've got nine different parts to go over. Uh, so then once you're done with that, click on to the next one and then more lessons progress after. Um, so if you want to sit down and try to take in all of this in one go, you absolutely can. It is entirely up to how each individual learns best. Um, everything is placed here just so if you don't necessarily need to start from the ground up, let's say you're, you've already got the basic sense of introductions and talking and connecting. Now you need to know more specific things like friends and relationships, um, weather and landscape, things like that. So you can always skip the beginning parts and move on to the further thing, to the more harder aspects of the language. One thing I would like to say is that this is, again, we decided to use a guest user. So there is a lot of progress to be made with Mango languages. And so simply, if anything, you definitely want to have a profile for this because there is too much to possibly lose out on if you end up closing the tab or turn off your computer and it doesn't save um, all of your progress. You may have to go back and re-click on things and uh, go over things again. But yes, sign up, you know, fill in the information and then it'll save for any time and any place. So if you wanted to use this website um, while you're on vacation or practice while you're away, you're capable of doing that, logging in, pulling up your information. It's if you never left your home. Final part I want to say is that even though there is so much um, to learn here in all the different units and chapters, uh, you by no means need to spend long hours reviewing this every day. Um, just like with Duolingo, um, five to 10 minutes per day is perfectly fine. Some of these chapters may be longer than that, um, but the people who created this wanted 
individuals to be able to pick and choose what they learned. Um, and so that's why the chapters are so nicely broken down into different sections. Uh, and thus the more difficult, complex uh, words and comprehension would be at the end. So if you do want to fully commit to learning the language, you can, but if you simply want to just know basic introductions and you know where to point things out and ask where you're going, uh, that's entirely uh, possible or for you to do as well. Next is going to be the news section in our resources. So we'll first go to article first, and this has full text and citations from journal articles. And this is going to have the same interface as many of the journals that we saw earlier. I'm going to go ahead and search Walt Disney. And then you'll go ahead and see a whole bunch of different articles that contain or are about Walt Disney. Next is going to be the Chicagoland news sources. And so here's where you can search any kind of newspapers that are in the Chicago area. So if you scroll down, you'll go ahead and see that it starts in alphabetical and then the dates. So they are not current, um, but they're archived from previous newspapers. And then where is the location? So we can go ahead and search for the Daily Herald. So you can go ahead and see that it starts in 1995 and goes to current. If you go down and see this daily South Town, you'll see that it ends in 2007. So we'll go ahead and click inside Daily Herald. And then here's where you'd be able to see all of the recent issues. And then you can even um, over here in the blue, with the numbers here, these are when articles in newspapers were published. If you see that it is gray, that means that there aren't any. Um, you can change the year if you knew that you there was an article from 2005 that you wanted. You can go ahead and see if you can find the date of when the article that you are looking for is. And then here it'll have the titles of all the articles that it has. So these are going to be all under business. There's going to be the neighbor section, the news, and then so on and so forth. So this is a really great database to go to when you're looking for specific articles from newspapers that could be from the past. So we went over the Chicago Tribune Historical and the Genealogy section. So I'm not gonna go over that again. If you'd like to see that, then you can go to our previous video, that part one. So next is gonna be Explora. And so this database is recommended to be your first step in a research project. And it also is where you can find consumer reports. Popular reason why members use Explora is for the consumer reports. So I'm going to go ahead and look up mattresses for consumer reports. So you can see here that it does automatically have mattresses consumer reports. But in my experience, if you search consumer reports in this search box, it doesn't actually come up, which is strange. So I'm just going to search what I'm looking for, which is mattress. And then you'll go ahead and see right away is the first option. It says mattresses and consumer reports buying guide 2022. Then you can go ahead and click inside and there's gonna be a full text of the consumer report for mattresses. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and choose first search. And this is gonna have the same interface as Echo, Eric, a lot of the other ones that we saw in journals. So I'm gonna go ahead and search something very broad and I'm gonna go ahead and search technology. And you can go ahead and choose what topic that it may be. And then you can go ahead and press search. 
Here is where you can choose which database that you'd like it to pull from. You can see the estimated results over here. And so you can see that there is a lot about technology. And so with WorldCat, that is materials that you may need to have delivered to the library. So that's not going to be something that is going to you're going to get right away. So you can go ahead and see that Echo and Class A Periodica will have full text options. And that's what those that green paper over here means. So you can go ahead and choose Echo, um, Class A Periodica, you can. Um, if you know Spanish, a lot of those articles are not in English. You can go ahead and choose WorldCat if you do have time. And then you can go ahead and just press select. And then you're gonna see that it's gonna be searching WorldCat and Echo. And you can go ahead and limit it to the year. So I wanna go ahead and limit it to 2020. And I'm gonna press search. And so then you can go ahead and see anything regarding technology will come up. And so you'll see that a lot of these are fiction books as well. So that may not be the exact search that you're looking for, um, but if it's in the library, you'll see that it says India Trails Public Library there. Next is gonna be Newsbank. And this is gonna be, they also own the Chicagoland News Sources. So it's gonna have a very similar interface. So what's really great about Newsbank is that you can choose they have right away different newspapers that are in our area. And so I can go ahead and choose Wheeling Countryside. And then you'll go ahead and see that Wheeling Countryside ended in 2009. So it's only gonna go up until that date, but you can look at articles up until then. And then the same thing as how it was in the Chicagoland resources is if it's highlighted in blue, that means that a newspaper was published that day. If it's in gray, you won't be able to click on that date. What else is really nice about Newsbank that I like a lot is the hot topics. So you can go to current events and choose hot topics. And then here's gonna have current events, business and economics, civics, government, politics, so on and so forth. And you can go ahead and choose one. And then it's gonna be all about the current events that are happening right now. Um, so you can see right away, January, 2022, uh, there's dinosaur embryo discovery. So I really like this to look at when I wanna know what's currently going on. Since I don't have cable at home, a, I don't watch the news as often. So this is a great way to be able to read what's going on in the world. Next is gonna be Newswires, and this is gonna be update, updated associated press news. So you can go ahead and search any kind of keywords, any books, journals. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and search my favorite author. Oh, nothing was found. Let's go ahead and see. So I went ahead and chose James Patterson. And it looks like there are a couple things that came up about James Patterson. And then you'd be able to go ahead and read the full text. You can see that it came out in 2019. You can go ahead and click on the article. And then here's where you'd be able to read the article. Next is gonna be the ProQuest newsstand. And this is gonna have major daily newspapers like the Chicago Tribune, LA Times, the Washington Post. And then here's where you can search current news. So I can go ahead and search, maybe there's something about migraines. Okay. And so then there's a couple, there's 11,000 results about migraines. And so it looks like this one came out in 2015. So it's not super recent but there is a letter about curing migraines. And so you'd be able to see where it came from. So that was in the New York Times. There's something from the Washington Post, more New York Times. So it's really cool you can choose any kind of topic and then it'll search the newspapers for if there is anything in that keyword. 
the next part we'll be going over is the reference page. And so if we scroll on down, uh, there's a couple different ones for us to choose. And so we will start with Funk and Wagnall's New World Encyclopedia. Um, one thing I just want to let people know right off the bat is right now it's currently using specifically just the New World Encyclopedia as what you're using this for. So it that's great. But once you click on choose databases, there are other ones that you can actually pick from. So if you are looking for um, data uh, and information uh, resources for <clears throat> um, like research or things like that, um, you can pick any one of these. And if you notice, they actually match up, but just in different wording. Uh, so if you see uh, mass complete, uh, you know, mass reference book, e-collection, uh, middle search plus, middle search reference, ebook collection, primary search, primary search, ebook collection. So it's the same thing. It's just the ebook version of it, um, or where they just draw from the ebook versions specifically. Um, so let's say, for instance, I want to look on things the news these guys and then we'll hit okay so then as you can see now it's changed to newspaper source plus and then newswire and web news as well uh, so let's say i want to look up uh, then right off the bat the bat now we've got 89,310 articles to pick from. Um, one of the nice things is that on the left side, you can always narrow down uh, how much of results you're actually getting. Uh, you can always change, uh, for instance, because I have it set to pick out three from three different sources, I can choose specifically which one. So. Let's say I noticed that newspaper source has the most amount and I got very few with these. So let's say I don't want them anymore and I just want specifically newspaper source. So now it's adjusted. So even though I see them here, it'll have all the newspapers first. And then you can always change the date as well. And full text, of course, if it's been peer reviewed, things like that. So let's say you pick an article. Uh, right. Let's just pick this one randomly. Uh, so as you can see, you'll get like a little snippet about what it is. Obviously, it's just the abstract. But then if you go down, you'll get a bit more of a dense version of it. Uh, and then, of course, if you want, you can always um, send these specific documents to yourself. You can have them printed. You can save them. Uh, if you want to use them in your paper or research or anything like that, it also does citations, which uh, for anybody who's ever had to do papers before, research papers, it's nice when they cite things for you. And the next reference part we'll be going to is Gale Legal Forms. Uh, so if we go down here and click on this, and then, so this website is pretty much the perfect place for any types of legal forms you may need, uh, specifically for Illinois. Uh, we only pay a subscription for Illinois forms, so, if you're hoping to find ones for other states, unfortunately, it's not available. Even if we go over here to all state subscriptions, um, as you can see, Illinois, again, is the only ones that are actually available. So if we go down, 
Um, I can just show you a very broad sense of what they cover. Um, but it's from A to Z, so any type of legal form you may need, um, such as things for bills of sales, adoption, uh, employment, licenses, taxes, uh, marriage, you know, real estate, contracts, things like that. Pretty much anything that you may want to legally have covered you'll want to get it here. So let's say for instance, uh, you wanted one for adoption. So it breaks it down into how one is. So if we click on general, then we'll see, and each paper is marked for something different. Uh, and it's very clearly stated. They're also each different number. They have different codes, which means they all do something different. So if you also know the code that you're looking for specifically, um, it's a little easier to look on the side. Okay, so let's say you find the form that you're looking for. So petition for to, to obtain hospital photocopy of birth certificate. So if we click on that, and it'll take us here, and then right next to the download section, you can click on it, and then you'll have exactly what you're looking for. You can always download it uh, as well. One thing I would like to point out uh, that I think everybody would enjoy is if you click over here to the tax form section, and you click on that. So as you can see, we've got the federal tax forms, not a problem, uh, but then we also have the state tax forms too. So the best part about the, this is that each one of these is linked to their main website that they go to. Um, so if you lived in Georgia, then it would take you to Georgia's uh, tax state tax forms um, the same thing with Missouri or New York or South Dakota uh, so if we click on Illinois here it took us to the Illinois revenue so illinois.gov which is exactly where we get our forms from and then of course just pick out which ones you are looking for And the next part we will go to is Novelist Plus. And it reads, find read-alikes for your favorite books, book discussion guides, and list of award-winning novels and more. So if we click on that. So there's a couple different parts to start looking from, um, but I'm gonna focus over here. So, as you can see, these are just the categories that you can pick from, uh, you know, mysteries, horror, fantasy, general fiction, westerns. So each of these you can pick from, and you can also pre-decide the age that you're, age range that you're looking for. Uh, but the best part is once you actually pick that topic, they break down into even more. So for instance, let's just say you wanted to pick fantasy, uh, then from this point, there are different types of fantasies that you can pick from. Uh, so if you want epic fantasies or dark fantasies, not just for teens, romantic fantasies, humorous fantasies, and each one of these does all of those. They may not have as many different options. It's entirely based on the category, um, but usually most will have about you know eight or nine different options to pick from. Maybe not this one. From here, of course, you can always change uh, to nonfiction too. Uh, and this, this is the recommended reading list. So for adults, obviously this has changed a lot. There's few, much fewer options, even less for teens and kids too. So let's say you wanna pick 
only award winner books. Uh, one of the nice things about this is that if you actually go up here to the corner and goes to the browse by section, um, after genre and appeal and themes, you can find award winners. And once you pull that up, uh, it's nice because they actually have it broken up each of the different awards that are given in different categories uh, for adult teens and children's um, and what's nice is that depending on how long ago the awards have been uh, going on um, they actually keep track of all of them so uh, let's say for the national book awards um, all right and then we want the national book awards for fictions uh, so as you can see, this is the one for 2021, and then they also have an honor list too. It also gives a little bit of a description at the top as well. Uh, these prestigious awards were established in 1950 to recognize American literacy works of exceptional merit. <clears throat> and then, as I said, if you keep going down, you can actually see when they first started going out. And it goes all the way to 1950 with the very first one, The Man with the Golden Arm. And so it's always nice to be able to have uh, a lot of different options to pick from. So then we can also pick like young people's literature. And then that even goes back to 1996 when that first started. And the next part we will go over is the record information services. Um, which is the Chicago area information on real estate transactions, new business, foreclosures, and bankruptcies. So if we click on here, as you can see, it says highest quality public records list, uh, access record information services database of over 30 million public records to help you achieve your marketing and business goals. Um, so if we go over here to the public record marketing lists area, <clears throat> this is where most of everything happens. Uh, if you go down, so these are the records that are publicly available for anybody to look at. And it's really beneficial for business owners because not only is this in regards to um, codes that could be uh, in relation to uh, their building and whether it's like up to par, um, if specific companies they may be working with are actually still in business or forever had to foreclose for some reason. Um, uh, sales tax and things like that, licenses, in case people say they have licenses, but they may have been revoked or things like that. There's a lot of different parts here that can be used by business owners in order to help uh, make sure that their services are up to the code that they're supposed to be. So let's say from this point, you want to pick something to look into. Um, let's say you want to look into the real estate transactions, you know, the building you're buying uh, or you're thinking of buying, you just want to see what the history is, was of it. Uh, so if we click on this, so as you scroll down, it'll tell you a little bit more about the information. It'll also explain about ways to narrow down how to search for what you're looking for. Um, so the date, buyer information, seller information, pretty much essentially anything that you may have that could help narrow down to find your specific um, location would help. And then the best part is it has every single uh, county in Illinois and they're all done alphabetically. So it doesn't matter which one you're in, you can always look up any of them. So then we are obviously in Cook County uh, so this is just the, that previous website was just the cover of it. This is the actual Illinois version of this. So uh, once you get sent to this point, you'll just have to click on back to what you were looking for. So we wanted real estate transactions. 
And then we are looking for Cook County records. Uh, and then this is where all the other information that you have in regards to uh, where it is, you know, the zip code, the city, uh, property type, all that stuff. And then once you're done with that, and you can find, of course, if you messed up, you can always just reset your fields. Um, and every single search result that you click into, whether it's the real estate ones or the DUIs or um, pub or any of the others, they all will have this type of specific defined search. So like I said, the more information that you have to help them, uh, the better they can give you for results. And finally, our last part in the reference section <clears throat> is the reference solutions, uh, a national directory with powerful search tools built in uh, was called reference USA. So if we click on here, uh, the nice thing that I like about this is that specifically for this uh, search, en search engine, we, you don't have to go anywhere. All of the information you need is right here. There's no specific places to click on or learn about. Everything that you'll need is can be found from any one of these points here. So dependent on which of these that you're interested in, in which of the databases you're interested in going through, um, you can either just jump instantly to look for what you want, or you can find out some more information. So um, I currently have the US business ones open up. And when you click on more information, a little pop up right, a little section right here will show up and it gives a little bit of a description. So uh, the US business database contains a total of 66 million businesses, including 17 million verified and 49 million unverified businesses that are updated weekly. It is the only business database that is enhanced with more than 24 million phone calls per year, providing you with the most accurate data possible. Um, so let's say for instance, I was looking for jobs and internships and I wanted more information. So now it says, uh, combine the power of the premier business reference and research tool, reference resolutions with the world's number one job site indeed.com. Find your next job with our state-of-the-art mapping tool. Okay, so let's say we are looking for jobs and internships. Uh, so if you click on search, or if you want to just click on this one, doesn't matter. Um, so this is just a quick search version. You can always do an advanced version with much more specific results, uh, but it's just asking for a city, state, or zip code. So we'll just give it Wheeling 60090, and then uh, let's just say we're looking for an entry level job. Um, it'll fill in whatever else you're looking for. So even before that, uh, with just Ian, we had engineer, uh, environmental science, enterprise, things like that. So then click on entry level, uh, view results. Uh, and as it stated before, this is updated every single week. Uh, it's also marked right here too where it's posted and of course the location too and specifically the company uh, from here if we go on back to new search um, we can obviously change it for anything else that we may want uh, so once we're back to this point uh, let's just show you another example that we could use um, the white pages some people don't even know what that is, but it's generally public records and public information that people can just look up. Uh, and it has like names and phone numbers and things like that. Uh, so if we click on more information, uh, this is the database for over 162 million US residents um, to conduct market research, locate friends and relatives. Uh, Pretty much it's just a search engine for finding people. So if we click on search, um, as you can see, as much info as you can tell <clears throat> will help search. And then you can also add additional filters too. 
more specifically anything uh, like country, metro area, um, former neighborhood, radius, things like that. Um, all of these different databases are really great to use. They're very easy to use. Um, and as I said before, just by clicking on more information in regards to each one, you can learn a little bit about all of them uh, together and then how each of them can be beneficial to anybody, whether you actually own um, a business or whether you're whether you don't. <laughs> And I'm sure I've already said this before, um, but it has stated in several different places that this database is updated weekly. Um, so all the information on here is about as up to date as you can get. 